In this video, I'm going to introduce you to shape layers in Adobe After Effects with an easy to follow exercise. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. As always, stick around to the end of the video for a bonus tip. All right, so in my last video, I did a basic introduction to Adobe After Effects with an easy to follow tutorial. If you missed it, I'll leave a link to it in the description. And several of you said that you really liked it and that you wanted to see more After Effects tutorials. So this week, I decided to do another one to show you how to create and use shape layers in Adobe After Effects. Shape layers are considered to be one of the basic building blocks of After Effects animations. They're used to create special effects, animated backgrounds, patterns, and so much more. So fire up your After Effects and let's go. All right, before we open After Effects, let's get organized. First, make a folder on your desktop and call it Shape Tutorial. Inside that, make another folder and call it Zero Finals. As mentioned in my other videos, I always put a zero before my Finals folder so that it pops to the top when sorting alphabetically. Now let's open After Effects. I'm working in After Effects version 22.5.0, so if yours is older or newer, it might look slightly different. All right, so once After Effects has loaded, click on New Project. And before we start working, let's save your project to the folder we just created on your desktop by going to File, Save As, Save As, and call your project Shape Tutorial. Navigate to the Shape Tutorial folder on your desktop and hit Save. Shape layers in After Effects are non-destructive or vector in nature, meaning that you can change things like their size or shape and they won't lose any quality. So for the first part of this exercise, let's first create a new composition for you to put your first shape in. By going to Composition, New Composition, and let's pretend that you're gonna be using this animation for a video that was shot in 4K at 24 frames per second. So I'd like you to select the UHD 4K 23976 preset from the drop-down menu. Now you can see your dimensions are 3840 by 2160, which is indeed 4K. And your frame rate is 23976, which is 24 frames per second. Let's pretend your animation is going to be 10 seconds long. So down here, change the duration to 10 seconds. And lastly, give your composition a name up here at the top. Let's call it Animated Shapes. Hit OK, and now you see your Animated Shapes composition in your project window. I always stress keeping your projects and drives organized so that you don't waste your time looking for stuff. So let's organize your project by clicking the folder down here to make a folder to keep your compositions in. Call it Zero Comps so that it rises to the top when you sort alphabetically. By the way, if you accidentally clicked off of it and you're wondering how to rename an item in After Effects, you have to click on the icon, then hit Enter on your keyboard to rename it. You'll see the text area turn blue. Now make another folder for your footage by clicking the folder icon and naming it Footage. Lastly, let's move your Animated Shapes Comp into your Zero Comps folder. Alright, expand your Zero Comps folder and double click your Animated Shapes Comp to bring it down to the timeline. There are different types of layers in After Effects, most of which you can see if you go to the Layer menu, New, Text is for text, which we used in the last tutorial. Solid is for something like a background that's one solid color that covers the whole canvas. Light is for creating a light source and shadows, which I'll cover in a future tutorial. Same with camera and null object, which I'll talk about down the road. But the one we want for this tutorial is a shape layer, so select that. Now in your timeline, you'll see a brand new shape layer. If you expand it, you can see that you have a shape layer, but there are no contents. We haven't added any shapes to it yet. We just have an empty shape layer. So let's add a shape. For this tutorial, we're going to add a star by going to the rectangle tool here at the top and clicking and holding on it and then scrolling down to the star tool. Once you have the star tool selected, click on your canvas and drag downward a little to make a small star. Congrats, you have your first shape. Now, if you look in the timeline under content, you can see that you have a polystar shape. 
All right, before we continue, let's take a moment to make sure that you're looking at your entire composition by going to the magnification menu in the lower left and selecting fit. That'll ensure that you're seeing everything that's on your canvas. All right, now let's expand the Polystar menu so that you can see the modification options that are available to you so you can customize your star. First, expand the Polystar path menu so that you can see the submenus. Then drag your cursor over the values to the right of position to bring your star to the center of your canvas. It doesn't have to be exact. Then let's change the color of your star to the color of your choice. To change the color, go to the Fill submenu under your Polystar menu and click on the box to the right of the color option. I'm going to choose this color. Lastly, let's give your star a little stroke on the outside by going to the Stroke menu under the Polystar menu and dragging your cursor over the value until you like the way the white stroke looks. That's looking good. Now let's create a little movement for our star. I'd like to make it spin like a pinwheel. Now's a good time to point out that there are two places you can make your shape move. One is on the shape itself within the layer and the other one is on the layer itself. Remember, shapes live within a shape layer. You can even have multiple shapes within a layer. Right now, we only have one. We're gonna create keyframes, namely rotation keyframes, to make it spin on the shape itself, not on the layer. So expand your Polystar menu and find the Transform Polystar option. Expand that. There, I want you to find the Rotation option. To the right of Rotation, click and drag to the right to start your star spinning. Now, you can see that my star is making a big circle, but that's not really what I want it to do. I want it to spin like a pinwheel. I want my anchor point to be in the center of my star. So hit Command Z to undo that, and to move your anchor point, make sure your Polystar 1 shape is highlighted. And click on this Pan Behind Anchor Point tool in the upper left. Once you click it, you should see a tiny blue circle, which is your shape's anchor point. And you'll see that it's way over here. We want to move it to the center of the star so that the star will spin like a pinwheel. So with the Pan Behind Anchor Point tool selected, drag that little circle so that it's in the center of the star. Now, when you go to the Transform Polystar menu and go down to Rotation, remember you don't want the Transform menu that's below that, that's for the whole layer. So in the Transform Polystar menu to the right of Rotation, click and drag the rightmost value by Rotation, and you'll see the star spinning like a pinwheel. All right, let's set our rotation keyframes. First, make sure your values by that rotation both say zero, then bring your playhead to the very beginning of your timeline and click the stopwatch next to that transform polystar rotation to create your first keyframe. Now go to the 10 second mark. Drag the slider at the bottom of your timeline if you can't see the whole thing. Once your playhead is at the 10 second mark, let's spin the star a few times by clicking and dragging that rightmost rotation value. You should see your star spinning. Now, when you bring your playhead back to the beginning of your timeline and hit spacebar to play it down, you've got a spinning star. All right, I'm gonna show you one last trick before we wrap up. I'd like you to make this one star into five spinning stars, all within the same layer. To do this, make sure your Polystar 1 shape is highlighted and hit Command D to duplicate it. The duplicate is automatically named Polystar 2 and it appears directly above Polystar 1. Once you've duplicated it, make sure Polystar 2 is highlighted. Choose your Move tool in the upper left and go up to your canvas and drag it to the upper right corner of the canvas. All right, let's duplicate Polystar 2. Now go back to your timeline, make sure Polystar 2 is highlighted, and hit Command D again to duplicate it. Go back to your canvas and drag your new Polystar 3 to the upper left corner. And let's duplicate again to create another star. With Polystar 3 highlighted, Command D again to duplicate, and drag your new Polystar 4 to the lower left. And lastly, make sure that new Polystar 4 is highlighted, Command D to duplicate, and then drag your Polystar 5 to the lower right corner. You should now have five stars. And if you bring your playhead to the top of your timeline and hit spacebar to play, you can see them spinning simultaneously. So sparkly. 
All right, one last thing before we go. I'd like to show you how, now that we have a shape layer with five shapes in it, you can modify that entire layer at once. First, I want you to collapse the contents menu so you no longer see all of your poly stars. And under that contents menu is the transform menu for the entire layer. Let's modify the scale value so that your outermost stars are right up to the edge of the canvas, but not going off by going to the scale under the plain old transform menu and clicking and dragging your cursor over either of the values until you see your stars moving towards the edge of your canvas. When you're happy with their new position, play down your timeline to see what you've got by hitting spacebar. And very lastly, I'd like you to change the opacity in the same menu to 25%, like so. I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, hit Command S to save your work, and let's export your movie by making sure your animated shapes comp is selected and make sure you've selected the area that you want to export. It is the lower bar here, should be stretched all the way to the end, 10 seconds. And going up to File, Export, Add to Render Queue. You should now see your render queue next to your animated shapes comp in your timeline. Now, if you remember in the first After Effects tutorial that I did when we went to export, we just left the render settings and output module at best settings and high quality. This time, I'm going to have you change your output module so that you render an alpha channel. An alpha channel will allow you to bring these stars into Premiere, plop the clip on top of another video clip, and you'll see your bottom video layer showing through between the stars. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So to the left of the output module in the render queue, choose high quality with alpha. Lastly, click on not yet specified next to output 2 to give your final movie a name. We're going to call it spinning stars. Navigate to the zero finals folder in your shape tutorial folder on your desktop. Once you've typed in spinning stars, hit save. Then in your render queue, hit render. And when it's completely rendered, hit Command S to save your project again, and Command Q to quit. Now, if you double click on your final movie, you'll see your stars, which is cool. But now, because you created this movie with an alpha channel, you can bring it into Premiere, put it on top of another clip, like so, and the alpha channel makes it so that you can see your video beneath it. And because we changed the opacity on the stars to 25%, remember that? You can see your video showing through the stars a little bit. All right, you made it. Let's stop here. Remember, I've got more After Effects tutorials coming up, so if you want to keep learning Adobe After Effects, hit subscribe. All right, let's do a quick tip. Did you know that if you're making animated graphics for Premiere in After Effects, you can revise it in After Effects, overwrite your original animation with the same name, and it automatically updates in Premiere. Here's what I mean. Say I wanted to revise my star animation by removing this star here. All I have to do is make sure my playhead isn't parked on my animation in Premiere, open up After Effects, remove the star in After Effects, re-render my final movie with the same name overwriting the first file, then click on Premiere again and voila, the clip has updated to the version without that star. Magic. So don't delete your animation clips from your Premiere timeline when you're revising them. Just keep them there, revise them in After Effects, render and overwrite, and your revised clip will automatically show up in your Premiere timeline. Sweet! Alright, as always, if you found any of this to be helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted, and I will catch you next time.